As a public health epidemiologist, climate change is one of many major concerns that we have in public health because it impacts so many people in so many different ways. Uh, for example, global warming, rising sea levels, uh, rising standing water, and in my particular case, infectious disease focused, uh, more mosquitoes and mosquito-borne diseases and waterborne diseases such as harmful algal blooms are but a few of the climate change worries that we have. Uh, climate change, which people refer to as extreme weather, means that the storms are often worse or more frequent and we have more flooding, more drought, uh, but in particular, the southeastern United States is rapidly becoming a moist, uh, nearly tropical area in which we can expect to see more standing water and without proper mosquito control programs, then diseases like Zika will become more prevalent in our communities. We've already seen this in South Florida, Miami, with dengue and now chikungunya and now the latest Zika. Good question. Individuals right now, until a Zika vaccine or a dengue vaccine becomes available, must learn two basics. Number one, remove all standing water from around the homes and call the county for standing water in ditches and other neighboring areas. Number two, use personal protection against mosquitoes, meaning uh, mosquito repellents plus long sleeves when going outdoors during mosquito season. However, in the Charleston and South Carolina Low Country, mosquito season is basically 24-7, 365. Uh, more in the summer and early fall, of course, but also during throughout the year. So we have to become more vigilant about mosquitoes and water ourselves. Communities also must deal with standing water problems and uh, large neighborhood mosquito control, both in water and spring the flyers that bite. There's a high level of frustration among public health officials, uh, local, state, and national, regarding the federal government, namely Congress, in action on uh, providing mosquito control research and vaccine funding for Zika, which is now the problem du jour. Uh, the same applied to dengue. And we learned too little too late that it's going to cost even more and take longer for a dengue vaccine. And the same thing is likely to occur with Zika. Uh, however, the current concerns with Zika and microcephaly, the neurologic and other problems associated with it, um, has put Zika a little more in the forefront. Regarding a Zika vaccine, in contrast to the uh, research and development on dengue vaccine, uh, it is fast-tracked currently as we speak. And a number of private companies with some support by the National Institutes of Health have already begun phase one development in, uh, in a D, uh, Zika vaccine. Phase one then leads to phase two in human trials, rather than a small handful of volunteers, large numbers of people. Phase three will take well into next year, 2017, and then uh, hopefully by the mid or end of 2017, we'll have a Zika vaccine, hopefully ahead of uh, a Zika of large outbreak or epidemic. Currently we have only a few clusters of local transmission cases now in Florida, although that is expected to uh, become more prevalent in Florida and perhaps as Dr. Fauci of the NIH said, we will see cases in the Gulf states and along the southeastern United States including South Carolina. But no one knows for sure, our crystal balls are still cloudy.
It is very frustrating. Most Americans don't know anything about Zika, or if they've heard of it, know very little in the way of factual information. Further, uh, the American populace being so divided on so many issues has likewise been divided on public health issues like Zika. And as a result, Congress has taken no action. They instead took a summer recess. And many people in America don't believe much in science anymore, don't trust the government. And even when we develop a vaccine, there will, there's going to be huge mistrust. So we have many barriers to overcome. And hence, uh, education and awareness and uh, these sorts of approaches must be done. However, the public will is not likely to respond until and unless it hits them personally, health-wise, or personally in their wallet. Young people entering into science fields in general are a little sharper than most. If they are entering into the medical science fields, then they're doubly sharp. If they keep up with the news, they're triply sharp. If they keep up with the news plus literature, quadruple. Then we're still talking about a small fraction of our young populace, the millennials. Sadly, most millennials don't know, don't care to know, and are not going to be directly impacted until their wallets or their personal health feel it.